for the first time is a savings technology, which has a huge impact on folks. It's the first time in history that anybody on any budget can store their wealth and it can be unconfiscatable and the price of protecting that wealth is virtually zero. Well, with Bitcoin, you don't, you don't need any of that. You just have to keep memorize your seed phrase. That's it. Hey guys, welcome back to Everyday Finance. In this video, Max Kaiser discusses Bitcoin and crypto. According to Max Kaiser, Bitcoin has the unique attribute of being the first of its kind in the financial world. Throughout history, money has been separated from the state or any centralized authority. Max Kaiser has no control whatsoever. So money takes on a whole new meaning from what we're accustomed to in our throughout the entirety of our existence on this planet. As humans, we have witnessed a rich and complex history. Typically, we encounter two common issues when it comes to finances. One factor to consider is the concentration of power or wealth due to financial resources. Throughout history, proof of stake has been the prevailing method. Having substantial wealth grants individuals significant influence, enabling them to potentially shape legislation for their benefit in order to increase their earnings. It's a corrupt situation, and it's due to the nature of the funds we've had available for centuries. And the same applies to gold, by the way. However, when it comes to Bitcoin, there is a system known as proof of work. It's a different approach. Regardless of the amount of Bitcoin someone or an organization possesses, he has no influence whatsoever to alter the protocol. So it's fair and equal in that sense. And it is also, for the first time, a savings technology that has a significant impact on people. For the first time ever, individuals of any financial means can now securely store their protecting your wealth is crucial, as it ensures its security and prevents any potential confiscation. However, it's important to consider the cost associated with safeguarding your assets. Almost non-existent. When examining the current distribution of wealth, it is often observed that individuals with significant wealth invest a significant amount of funds safeguarding that fortune. They make purchases, they employ security personnel, and they maintain secure storage facilities. There are numerous lawyers, accountants, and politicians, aren't there? Protecting and maintaining that wealth comes with a significant price tag. Well, at Bitcoin, you don't require any of that. All you need to do is remember your seed phrase and you're good to go. And lots of things McKaiser discussed, so please watch the video to end and like, share this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance. Thanks. One of the interesting attributes of Bitcoin is that for the first time in history, it separates money from the state or it separates money from any centralized control whatsoever. So money becomes something entirely different than we've been used to in our entire history as humans on this planet. Most of the time we have two problems with money. One is con concentration of power or concentration of wealth because money throughout history has been pretty much what's called proof of stake. If I have a lot of money, I have influence and I can change laws to make it easier for me to get more money. It's corruption and it's because of the nature of the money that we've had for millennia. And the same applies to gold, by the way. But with Bitcoin, it's a system called proof of work. It's not proof of stake. And no matter how many Bitcoin anybody has or any organization has, they have no influence at all to change the protocol. So it's very egalitarian in that sense. And it also for the first time is a savings technology, which has a huge impact on folks. It's the first time in history that anybody on any budget can store their wealth and it can be unconfiscatable and the price of protecting that wealth is virtually zero. If you look at how wealth is aggregated today, usually those with a lot of wealth spend a lot of money protecting that wealth. They buy, they have security guards, they have vaults, they have a lot of lawyers, they have a lot of accountants, there's a lot of politicians, right? There's a huge cost to protecting and maintaining that wealth. Well, with Bitcoin, you don't, you don't need any of that. You just have to keep memorize your seed phrase, that's it. And that's available to anybody. 
So the person who's, let's say, you know, an artist who sells art, they make, let's say 20% of the, the nominal uh, per capita income in a country or 50% of it, the, the capita income, but they're happy to do that because they just want to be artists. They don't want to be grinding it out as a lawyer, perhaps, but they they can put their savings into Bitcoin and it's inflation proof. So their purchasing power will always go up. The purchasing power will mathematically continue to go up forever and they can be free to express who they are. And I think that's part of this Renaissance uh, 2.0 is that it frees up self-expression in a way that we haven't seen since the enlightenment, since we haven't seen since the Renaissance. And that's totally enabled because of the savings technology, this unconfiscatable separation of money and state called Bitcoin. So all of the changes are incredibly positive. And um, whether this introduces another cycle um, I think that I'm sure it does, but I think that the nature of this cycle is is quite uh, interesting in a number of different ways. But I don't see it being a, one that heads back into kind of a dystopian ditch at the end of the cycle. I think this is the beginning of something truly spiritual, which is uh, as, as a species, as a, we, we, we've been lacking in a lot of ways. Uh, to make contact with that on a sustained yeah. basis. As individuals, we have moments of spiritual beauty or we have aesthetic beauty or we go and we see art at the museum and we're like, wow, I'm moved emotionally by this. But imagine being able to ride that wave for your entire life and just be on that vibe. Well, this is what Bitcoin offers. This is part of the philosophy of Bitcoin beyond the monetary and the technology of it. There's an ethos and an aesthetic that is transformative and we see it here. So people in El Salvador, even though they don't use it necessarily Bitcoin, they're aware of it. And once you start thinking about it, it changes the way you think. So I say, and I've said for many years now, you don't change Bitcoin, Bitcoin changes you if you allow that to happen. So that that's the what I'm looking for. According to Max Kaiser, the nature of this cycle is rather intriguing in various aspects. However, it ultimately takes a turn towards a dystopian outcome by the end. He believes this is the start of something truly profound for humanity as a whole. We have been lacking in various ways to establish consistent communication with that on a fundamental level. As individuals, we experience moments of profound spiritual and aesthetic beauty. We are often captivated by the art we encounter in museums, leaving us in awe of the artist's ability to evoke such strong emotions. I feel deeply affected by this, but picture yourself riding that wave indefinitely and simply staying on it. This is what Bitcoin offers. This aligns with the underlying principles of Bitcoin. There is a certain ethos and aesthetic that goes beyond the financial and technological aspects of it, has the power to bring about significant change, and it's evident right here. People in El Salvador are aware of Bitcoin, even though they may not necessarily use it. And once you begin considering it, it alters your thought process. According to Kaiser and his own long-standing belief, Bitcoin has a transformative effect on individuals rather than the other way around. Let's back to the Max Kaiser interview. Right, well, clearly CBDCs, central bank digital currencies, are on the other side of the, of the fight toward digital so sovereignty and, and freedom. Good. CBDCs are highly centralized, highly controlled. It's uh, the fiat money on steroids. It's, it's fiat money, everything you hate about fiat money, but much worse. And so that, that's clearly on the, the battle is it will be fought against uh, central bank digital currencies. And I think that what we can look for and what we can be helpful about is that the battle is going to be all about energy and energy use. And Bitcoin uses a lot of energy. We know this. And so do CBDCs. So do the, the so does the military uh, use a lot of energy. So does AI, artificial intelligence, use a lot of energy. And we want most of the energy or all of the energy, we want it to be hashing Bitcoin. So Bitcoin and the energy used by Bitcoin is the energy that gives everyone individual sovereignty and freedom and 
the ability to opt out of the monetization of violence and to opt into the monetization of love or the demonetization of violence. That's what the energy usage in Bitcoin allows us to do. And the good news is if you look at the amount of energy that Bitcoin uses, what's called the hash rate, it's absolutely skyrocketing. And it's never been in the bear market, really. It's been going up for 12, 13 years. And that tells me on, from a spiritual perspective that the forces of good are being, are throwing energy at Bitcoin as a way to fight against evil. And I think at the today, if you were to look at the amount of energy that Bitcoin uses and the rate at which it's increasing, you would say good is triumphing over evil. So this gives me a lot of hope. And I don't think centralization in anything works at all, except cancer. Cancer is the only thing that seems to work to be overly centralized and parasitic. That's that's the cancer model. But I think we're going to win against the cancer of CBDCs. According to Max Kaiser, it's fiat money. Everything you dislike about fiat money, but on a much more severe scale. And so it's obviously a priority that the fight be waged against central bank digital currencies. And Max Kaiser believes that we should focus on what we can observe and how we can provide assistance. The upcoming battle will revolve entirely around energy and its consumption. Bitcoin consumes a significant amount of energy. We are well aware of this, and the same goes for CBDCs and the military. Just like any other technology, AI or artificial intelligence consumes a significant amount of energy, and we aim to maximize the energy devoted to hashing Bitcoin. Bitcoin and its energy consumption play a significant role in empowering individuals, emphasizing individual sovereignty and freedom as well as the option to refrain from participating in the monetization of considering the topic of violence, one may also consider the choice to embrace the commercialization of love or the rejection of violence as a profitable endeavor. This is the potential that the energy usage in Bitcoin unlocks. If you learn something from this video, then please like this video and subscribe our channel Everyday Finance, and we will meet in next video, thanks.